hello everybody welcome back to my channel today i am finally getting round to recording my birth story we had our baby two months ago now so only just sitting down to do it which as you can probably imagine first baby everything's a bit manic trying to get the hang of things and you just don't really have the time that you used to have so today is probably the first day that i felt I've got enough energy to do it for one and that she's just happy so she's with daddy at the minute she's about to have a nap she had quite a bad colic so it's been a rough two months but we're coming out of it now so yeah i thought i'd just take the time to sit down and actually record this and get it done and uploaded because i haven't really been uploading much on my channel which got quite a good excuse but yeah i just want to start off by saying it's not like the most positive birth story in the world so anyone that's looking for the like really positive ones it's not overly positive but it's also not the most negative in the world either so it's just probably just your standard birth story for your first child I would probably say but yeah I'm not gonna moan about it because baby was okay for the whole thing and I'm okay so that's all that matters so I will be looking at my phone for some of this because there are bits of it I can't really remember not not really not remember but not remember the timings really so I've got it on my phone it's so weird how you forget because you'll think that it will stay with you forever but you definitely don't so yeah, I might, there might be a few pauses here and there whilst I look at my phone. Just to also say, might look rough, but this is probably the best I've looked in two months. Even just wearing a slight bit of makeup now, I feel great. Just got used to myself with not having makeup on, which, mum life, eh? Okay, so it started on the Friday, and this was three days before my due date. So I'd been to my sister's the day before to look after her kids because she had to take one of them to the hospital. And I remember I was like, right, let's get walking because that's what they say brings on labour like being active so I was walking up and down she's got quite a long hallway in her house so I was walking up and down the hallway for ages and ages and ages and then I finished there and came home and I thought I'll walk to Tesco and it's quite a big hill well for when you're 40 weeks pregnant it's a big hill anyway so I'd, I remember walking to Tesco and on the way back walking down the hill I thought I was not in pain but it was like a lot of pressure and I was really uncomfortable. Anyone that's been pregnant and has got to that stage, everything's just uncomfortable anyway. But anyway, yeah, so I thought, oh, a bit uncomfortable. Went to bed that night and then woke up about three o'clock, I think, in the morning for a wee, which again, probably the fourth wee I'd had. And I got back into bed and I was really uncomfortable and that's just normal anyway. If you're not that far yet, it will be. Really uncomfortable. And I was trying to get to sleep ages and I started to get a bit of tummy ache. Well, lower body aches anyway and I think it got to about half four-ish maybe five o'clock and I thought Lou's alarm is going to start going off at a minute and Lou is one of these people that has like six alarms to get up and it's the loudest thing and normally I'll just about be dropping off back to sleep and it'll start going off so I thought right forget it I'm going to go downstairs because I was, I was getting quite like quite a lot of like I'd describe it as period pains to start with so I went downstairs and I thought I'll just go back to bed when he's gone back to work and I sat on the sofa and had a cup of tea and still getting these period pain like ache type things. Lou went back to work and I thought, I don't think I'd be able to go back to sleep now. So I sat downstairs till about nine and they were getting a little bit stronger and they hadn't gone. So I've been having them for probably about four or five hours now. And I was sort of timing them on my app, but there was no point. So I thought, All right, I'm gonna go and have a shower just in case this is labor. At this stage, I really did not think it was. I honestly thought it was just Braxton Hicks. So I had a shower, washed my hair, tried to shave down below, but couldn't see. Couldn't see a thing, so gave it my best shot. Didn't even bother with my legs. We've got like, it's not a small shower, but it's definitely not massive. So to sit down in the shower to shave my legs was quite a lot of effort, so I just left them. Just <laughs> totally abandoned them. Um, this was probably about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning by now. So I had a shower and I sat in bed for a bit and I closed all the curtains and I've got like an oil diffuser thing with like a little light on so I put that on just to relax me a bit and put my lavender in there because I wasn't sure at this stage if it was labour it was definitely a lot stronger though by now and I sort of managed to maybe have about half an hour 45 minutes sleep on and off because again the pain was getting a bit stronger so I wasn't really necessarily able to sleep through it and I would say it was more like twinges now, like longer twinges. So I rang Lou and I said, look, this could be labour because it has been going on for quite a while now. And he was like, oh, shall I come home? And I said, there's no point, don't bother. But he said, oh, 
My van's got a flat tyre, so I best get that sorted. Yes. So he sort of went off to get that sorted. And then carried on. Tried, I dried my hair because I had wet hair. And I thought, if I'm going to sleep, I don't even want wet hair. So I dried my hair and then tried to go back to sleep. Maybe about 11, 12 o'clock. Absolutely couldn't, couldn't go back to sleep. And also, worth pointing out, it was my nephew's birthday. And I was meant to be going around to my sister's to see my nephew and give him his presents. But I, I just thought, I'm not going to be able to go. So there, again, that made me think maybe this is labour because I really, I would have really gone round, but I really wasn't up to it, I don't think. I really don't think I'd have been in the best spirits. <laughs> so um, I went downstairs in the end and tried to watch some films and things, but yeah, I think it got to about three o'clock and I rang Lou and I said, like, do you mind coming home? Just because I was so uncomfortable. I hadn't really eaten anything because I just didn't really feel comfortable enough to go and stand up in the kitchen and make food, which I keep saying to people now, at this stage, I now wish... I could feel those contractions again just to know how strong they were because obviously things got a lot stronger and I would like to know if I was being a total wimp which I think I probably was thinking about it now but at the time I really thought I can't even go and stand in the kitchen and make myself some lunch so I didn't so Lou got home I think I just had some snacky food anyway so Lou got home I didn't really want to eat but I knew I had to so he went and showered and I had some pasta, but I don't think I had the pasta till later. I don't know, but I know it was dark. When Lou got home and he was all showered and stuff, we thought, oh, I said, oh, I might have some paracetamol, which again, why bother? And we only had one, so I took the one paracetamol, really didn't do anything, what was the point? <laughs> Pointless, but I was at the stage where I know people are so different in pregnancy, in, in labour, but I didn't want any sound. So the TV was off, the curtains were shut, there was no, I couldn't have the lights on. So again, I just had my little oil diffuser with the light on and um, I put my clary sage in there. And because that, if you don't know, that's meant to assist with bringing on labour. I don't know how much it really works, but that's what my midwife recommended. So I bought a little oil thing of that. So I just had that little oil diffuser on the floor and we just sat there in silence for ages. Whilst I had these little contractions, which again, I can't really remember how strong they were, but I know at the time it was quite painful. So I had this little heat bag thing, like bean bag type thing that I'd been using on my back because my back was hurting. It was in a bit of both my contractions, back and front. So I had sort of on both, but every time I had a contraction, I'd grip this bean bag, which really helped me. It came to hospital with me. So I might want to get something like that to grip onto. Um, so yeah, it got to about maybe, I'd had some pasta. Lou made me a bowl of pasta, which I didn't eat much of, but I thought carbs, better eat some of it. So I had some pasta, regret, because it made me feel really sick. And for hours and hours and hours afterwards, all I could taste was pasta. So I absolutely will not be having that with the next child. But to be honest, I don't know if anything would have made me feel any better. But yeah, it got to about 11 o'clock at night and we'd planned to have our baby in the local birth centre. So it was like a hypnobirth in place, got the pool, we would have been the only ones there. It's literally, I'm not even joking, two minutes drive from our house. So I was really excited about going there, everything looked great. And we called the triage line and she said, oh, I'll ring them now. And she called back and said, um, the birth unit's closed tonight because one of the midwives has got COVID so they're all having to isolate till they get the test back. So I was really disappointed and really annoyed. But she said the, the local hospital, so Truro, have also got a birth unit with the same thing. So obviously just a bit further away. So I was like, okay, great. The only thing that put me off going there was I thought, COVID, Lou's not going to be able to come in with me until I'm in full labour. So if I get there and I'm not, then he'll be sent home. But she said, no, they have a room there where you can wait in there until you're in like, active labour and then you can go into the actual birthing room. So I was like, okay, great. And she said nobody was in there at the minute. So we went down, this was about midnight, and obviously it was summer, so we had her in August. Summer in Cornwall during COVID has been absolutely manic. So we got there, it took about half an hour to get there, and I was really conscious about the car journey just because I'd heard so many people say that the car journey was horrible because I had really bad contractions but mine had been so all over the place when we called the triage line she said try and ring back when they're sort of four to five minutes apart so I think actually think about it I think we'd rang before yeah we rang at 11 and then we and then it got to like 12 and or well, maybe we've rang before I don't know I can't remember but I remember thinking they're not 
getting any closer. They, they were all over the place. One minute, like I'd have like a bout of them where they were like four minutes apart and then they'd go back to like eight minutes apart again and this kept going. So we just said, I just said, I wanna just go down now because I really just wanted to see how dilated it was. So we left here, I think about midnight which was good because the roads were quiet and it took us half an hour then on a quiet run. And we got there and got into the birth like centre bit. So there's like the birth centre where it's like more hypnobirthing and then the other side is more like maternity ward, labour ward. So it's like a proper, I don't know how to explain it, like hospital ward I guess. We went to the other side. So she checked me, the midwife checked me and I was two centimetres. So I'd been going now and I was been, I'd been awake for nearly a day and I was very tired. And she said, it's up to you. You can go home and your contractions will probably come on a lot quicker because you're in your own environment or stay here. And it might be a bit of a slower process. But we thought if we go home and then things progress in the next say eight, nine hours, and then I've got to come back, it's going to be rush hour. It's going to be busy traffic and it could potentially take us over an hour to get back here. I'd only had two contractions in the car, I'll say. They slowed right down in the car, so I had two contractions on the way and it did only take half an hour. So it wasn't too bad to be honest. I had my bean bag, I clenched my bean bag, but I thought if we're a bit further along, I might not be very keen on that journey. So we decided to stay in the hospital and they've got this little room called the Nook, which it literally had like a foam bed type thing. I don't know if it was, I say it was foam. It was a proper like, well, it was hard, but it wasn't like a proper bed, if you know what I mean. And then there was a chair and a TV and it was all dimly lit. It was all just fairy lights in there. All the corridor in that little ward bit only had fairy lights. It was all very relaxing. I didn't have my own little bathroom or anything, but there was a toilet around the corner. They said you can't really pace up and down the corridor, unfortunately, because of COVID, but you're allowed to stay in this room. You're welcome to. And she said, we'll come back and check you every four hours. I was like, okay, great. Again, didn't want any lights on. The TV was absolutely not going on. Poor Lou was bored to tears. Or we'd, we'd obviously packed our hospital bag, but we didn't really pack an awful lot in terms of entertainment. And I, I know some people sit and play cards. No thanks, I wouldn't have wanted any of that. I literally just wanted to sit there in silence. We occasionally had a conversation. No TV or anything, so Lou just sat on his phone for a lot of the time. Every time I needed to go for a wee, I had to go down the corridor and always had a contraction in the corridor. I had to cling onto the wall. And um, I think we'd probably only been there two or three hours before I'd started to have a bit of a show when I went to the toilet, a bit of bloody show. And every time I went back then I was bleeding. This is the bit where it sort of gets a bit cloudy for me. I forget when I'm checked. Okay, so apparently I wasn't checked again, I don't think, until about six o'clock in the morning. And I was three centimetres. So we'd been there at this point nearly six hours and I was three centimetres. And also, when they check you, I did not want to be laying, laying down. I don't know what it was, I found it so uncomfortable. So Lou was on the bed and I was just sat in this chair upright. It was uncomfortable, but laying on the bed was awful. So she had to obviously lay me down to check me. Hated it, absolutely hated it. So three centimetres at six o'clock. So again, now I'd been awake for about a day. We'd sort of had about maybe an hour, two hours of dropping off in between contractions, but it's only six minutes here and there and then I'm awake again so I was very tired but they did say that they thought I would be in full labour within a few hours so you have to get to four centimetres until you're in active labour that so they thought I would be they did say you'll be in active labour this morning so gave us a little bit of hope so they said they checked me again in four hours so we got to I think about quarter to eleven it literally I'm not joking they checked me at half six by the time half ten came around I think it got to maybe like one minute after half ten I was like where are they why have they not come and check me? I was on edge. I really just wanted them to come because it, it it was painful and I really just wanted to get this baby out of me now because I was so tired and exhausted. Luke kept trying to feed me. They bought me some toast at one point. This was before, I think they checked me at half six and then I think she said, do you want some toast? So she, gave, she bought him some toast. It was horrible. It was horrible. You know, they say like the first toast you have after you have the baby is the best thing ever. I said to Lou, if this is what the toast is like, I don't want it. It was rank. It was brown, horrible bread. It was cold bread. So the, Lou couldn't, you know, like when you get the little butter sachets, Lou couldn't spread the butter on it. So it was mainly dry. I didn't really want it anyway because I didn't really want to eat, but I forced myself to eat. So I was pacing. Our room was tiny. I'd say it's about the same size as an average side bathroom to walk around. 
So I was probably ma managing to do like four steps each way before I had to turn around. So I was trying to walk to get my labour moving on a bit quicker. So I was like having a bit of toast walking up and down. And then every time I felt contraction, Lou had to run to me so I could cling on to him. And this went on for a while. And then they came back at about, yeah, quarter to 11 in the end. So 15 minutes later than they said they were gonna be there. And that's a big amount of time when you're in labor. And I was five centimeters. So we could finally go into the actual birthing room. They just said that someone had just come out of there. So someone had just had their baby and gone. They had to clean it off because of COVID. She said it would take them about, I think it was about half an hour to clean it all. At this point, I had no pain relief either, by the way. They kept offering me pethidine and something else and I said no so she said do you want gas and air and I said no so I think they gave me some cocoa de mole, which again I didn't feel so it wasn't even worth it and I didn't really want the pethidine because it's meant to make the baby drowsy and for a few days so I just thought I don't really want that I can manage it I was just doing I was just doing the breathing at this stage anyone that's interested in the hypnobirth if you get the Freya app you can time your contractions and it will help you to breathe. It tells you to breathe in and out as well. And you can set it to think it's eight in, four out, or there's a lower one like five in, four out or something. But I did the lower one and it helped me massively. It got me through a lot of the breathing. It got me through a lot of the contractions with the breathing. It really helped. I think it just gives you something to focus on. And I know breathing helps a lot anyway, but I... I'm massively grateful for that because it really, really helped me and it got for me a lot of my labour without any pain relief. So if anyone is wanting to go down the hip and the birthing route, recommend the breathing 100%. So we finally got into the room and it was lovely. It was really nice. Lou did a video clip of it, so I'll put it in here. And yeah, so you can see there's the pool. I had a bed, the chairs. I had my own little bathroom. I don't know if you filmed the bathroom. I think I was in the bathroom when he did this video and it was really relaxing it was really nice proper what i wanted because i didn't want i was i didn't want any of the lights on and um our midwife came in and she was lovely Re and do you know what i could not fault this place enough i really did not want to go up to the main hospital because i'd heard bad things and i just thought oh i'm just gonna be like another number when i'm up there nobody's gonna be bothered blah 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 but everyone was amazing from start to finish couldn't thank them all enough they were wicked and our midwife it changed a few times because i've been there for so long at this point we'd been there nearly 12 hours so I think we'd seen the first midwife who'd, who checked me had gone home and then there was another midwife and then the midwife then who who we had in the actual birthing room was obviously a different one. I think the one who checked me before was like the like one in charge, I don't really know. But yeah she was really lovely and Lou got a bloody Sunday dinner, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, chicken dinner whilst I'm in full labour. <laughs> so we went in there and they said right we'll come and check you again at um half two but the midwife was coming in like every 10-15 minutes to check baby's heartbeat and she was amazing throughout the whole thing which I'm surprised about because it did go on for so long but she always has such a strong heartbeat um so we'd been in this room for a bit and it was freezing in there I think it was the if, if anyone can remember it was when we had the really hot weather. It was like 30s. So they changed all the aircon around the hospital, but they couldn't amend it in the rooms. It was like a central control. So I'm quite a cold person anyway. And God, it was cold. At one stage, I was sat on this chair with three blankets around me and it really slowed down my contractions because I was so cold. And they were coming like every 12 minutes again. And again, this carried on. Like I say, before I got into the hospital, they were all over the place. This stayed that way. They were up and down constantly. So the midwife's like, I don't really want you to get in the pool yet because that might make things worse, but why don't you have a shower? So I got in the shower. At this point, not bothered, totally naked, sitting in the cha in the shower, and it was nice and warm, and I was like running it all over me. And it was great, but then the midwife was coming in every five minutes to check the heartbeat. So you know when you're in the shower and somebody opens the door and it's freezing cold, every time she opened the door, she'd have to listen for like 30 seconds. It was cold again. So it just, it didn't really work. But then while I was in the shower, I didn't want to get out. Nightmare. But I thought, right, I'm going to get out, dry myself and put, I had some joggers with me, put some joggers on, put some fluffy socks on and just get warm and walk up and down. And that really helped then. My blood was still coming out quite a lot at this point as well. Lou was amazing. I couldn't, couldn't fault him. He is quite a squeamish person. Was at the point where he didn't even want to cut the cord because it makes him feel funny. 
he was not bothered. I had to have a pad in so they could monitor how much blood was coming out of me. She, he was changing them, not bothered in the slightest. We've gone to a whole new level of our relationship, but wouldn't have been able to do it without him. He was amazing. So he was like doing all that stuff whilst I was in the shower, getting me a fresh pad. And yeah, so I warmed up after that, I had my socks on, big jumper, my joggers, and I was walking up and down the room to like keep warm. And I was trying to eat again. She kept saying, you should eat. So I had a banana, gross, didn't want it, but I forced it down me, forced myself to have some Lucasade Sport because again, now I'd been awake for, well, we got into that room at 11. So I'd been awake for nearly a day and a half at this point. And I was getting to the point where every time I had a contraction when I was standing up, I was like falling asleep standing up because I was so tired. Absolutely knackered. I've got some pictures that Lou's done throughout the labour. I did have some videos, but I'm totally naked, so I'm not going to put them in, obviously. But I've got some pictures. So she came and checked me and she said, I want to think that you're going to be seven, but I think you're still going to be five centimetres. Which I didn't want to hear. And she laid me down and guess what? Still five. She said, you're probably on the cusp of six, but I think you're more like five. So I was pretty upset by that, as you can probably imagine, because it was four hours after we'd already been five. So she said, I'm going to go and speak to the main labour ward, and like the head midwife, so I think they have to get their advice from them. And she came back and said, because I'm bleeding quite a bit, they're a bit worried about it, because the baby's heartbeat's okay, she said, I'm going to break your waters here and we can keep you here for two hours and see how you get on. And then if things haven't progressed as much as we want, you're going to have to go down there because they wanted to monitor my bleeding a bit more. And she also said that she thought the baby was back to back and that's why I was bleeding. And I kept saying to her, I was having my contractions in my back still, which she said I shouldn't be having. should be in my front now. So when she felt up and broke my waters and got all that out, she said, I think I can feel the baby's the wrong way round. So try not to push. Try not to push. If anyone that's had a baby, have, if you've ever been told try not to push, it's nearly impossible. So that hurt. Every time they told me to not push and I was holding it in, it was fucking killing me. More than I think it would have done because I was trying to hold it back. Because, But then I felt like every time I was holding it back, I was bleeding more. That wasn't easy. At this point, once she'd broken my waters, things ramped up from there. It got a lot more painful. So we got checked at half two, three-ish, and then she came back and checked me at half six, so after she broke my waters, and I was six centimetres, so we'd gone at one. But she told me, we're gonna have to take you down now to the labour ward because things hadn't moved. I'd only been, oh, I forgot to say this, I had been in the pool for 10 minutes and she made me get out because I was bleeding, so pointless. I said, I think I'd like an epidural because I'm absolutely exhausted and I physically don't know how much more I can do this. Before I was in labour, I didn't want an epidural. I didn't want it at all. At this point, I had started on the gas and air, which did a bit, but not really. So I was only on the gas and air. Yeah, I said, I want an epidural. So she went off to inquire about that before they moved me. And she, and they, and she said, I think there's a bit of a wait for the epidurals, but they'll sort that out once you're up there. So they moved me down to the labour ward and on the way, couldn't have the gas in there, so they just gave me like the nozzle as like a bit of a placebo, although I knew it wasn't there, so it didn't really work. It was only up the corridor, but God, if anyone had seen me, if anyone was coming in at that point to start their labour, I feel I'm really sorry because I probably made it look absolutely dreadful. But yeah, they moved me down there and put the cannula in my hand and this was about half five six o'clock I'd say so she put they put the cannula in and they came back and said right there's a bit of a wait for the epidurals there's four people in front of you and it probably takes about 20 30 minutes for each one and there's only one anaesthetist so I was like you are joking me I was not happy about this um, they're going to go and see if there's another anaesthetist in the main hospital and they, if they can come and help I was like great okay Came back 10 minutes later, they can't come and help, so there is only the one. I was like, I, I remember laying there saying, why is he so mean? Because I was just in so much pain and I just wanted it to be over now. It was so hard. Luckily, the midwife I had was very experienced and she was, I think she had about 25 years under a belt. So we were on about seven o'clock now at this point. So I'd been there for 17 hours in this hospital. She said, what, you, what do you feel when you have your contractions? And I said, I feel like I need to push, but they're telling me not to push because the baby's back to back and her head's swelling. And she said, if you feel like you need to push, just 
Porsche. I was like, okay, great. So she left the room and within two minutes I had a contraction and I pushed and I felt the head come in. So I said to Luke, I can feel the head, I can feel the head going at the midwife. So he'd legged out the room and got the midwife to come back in and she had a little feel. And she was like, yeah, I can feel the head now. So we're, we're in full motion. So she stayed with us from then on. And Lou said to me, he, because they'd belted me up at this point, because you don't get all that on the birth unit, but they'd put a belt around me to monitor the contractions. So Lou said he was watching the monitor for this belt, and every time I had a contraction, it goes up so you can see. And he said, um, a few of my contractions got to about 60, 70, and he said he could tell how painful that was for me, because I was literally like gripping his hand very tightly. And I was actually quite loud which I'm quite embarrassed about now but she the midwife was saying to me when you push you need to hold that in and use that scream almost to push and this is where the difference to the hypnobirthing and this is why I'm sort of saying it's not the most positive hypnobirthing story because hypnobirthing teaches to breathe for the baby out whereas I didn't do that but the hypnobirthing definitely helped me for the majority of my labour so at this point starting to push now didn't have the epidural too late but had the cannula and he said when I was pushing, that monitor went up to a 100 plus. Well, I think 100 the max, so he knew how much it hurt me. And we were going for about maybe an hour, just under an hour. And then the baby was here. And I remember just looking down at one point and the head was there. The head was out. And once that head's out, oh my God, the relief. Even just that little hair, just knowing it's nearly over. And I could just see all her hair and it was lovely. And I thought, the midwife said, a couple more pushes and your baby will be here. And I was like, right, I'm going for it. And she kept saying to me, just rest in between your contractions. Because I just kept going and going and going. I would just like push, 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 push until I was exhausted. But she was like, you need to rest a bit more. But I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Because if this baby's all beside, I need this pain to end. So I think I pushed twice more and then she just came out. And she was there and it was the best thing ever. The pain just instantly stops. It's like amazing. I can't even believe how much it just stops. And they just gave her a quick wash down and put her on me and it was the best feeling in the entire world. Not even just that it was over, but I just had my little girl and it was lovely and we were so happy. <laughs> Lou got, Lou, he didn't cry. He didn't cry at that, but he got upset before, which I was surprised about because I didn't think he would, but Oh, it was just such a nice moment and nothing, nothing can prepare you for that. It's just that long journey and I honestly think because we had such a long birth, it made it all better. It made it so much better because it was just finally done and we'd worked so hard and now she was here with us and it was amazing. And it was just, yeah, it was lovely, it was amazing. Um, and then after that, I'd said, the midwives were about to swap shifts almost immediately as soon as I'd had her. I'd said to the midwife who delivered her, have a torn, because I was really conscious I was going to have third degree tears, because both my sisters did. And my midwife had told me that it's more common, although I did mention that at the hospital, and they were like, no, never heard that before. So I said, have a torn, and she was like, no, no, you look fine to me. So I was like, great. Then the next midwife who took over from her came back, came in and said, I'm just going to check you. And she went, I think you've got um, third or fourth degree tears. I was like, okay, what happened to not tearing at all? So I was like, oh, okay. And then she said, I'm just going to go and get the surgeon to come and look. And she checked me and she was like, yeah, you have got third degree tears, so you will have to have surgery. So obviously I already had the cannula in, so I didn't have the epidural, but basically had one anyway because they had to numb me from the waist down for the surgery. So, yeah, and anyone that ha is worried about that because... Everyone says to me who oh, I know that are having a baby or whatever, did you feel it tear? Well, no, because I don't really know what it feels like. Obviously, it was in pain anyway, because I was pushing out a baby, so didn't really know that, that I'd torn. It didn't hurt afterwards. Um, so, yeah, we had about an hour with, with the baby, Emmy. I'm going to start saying Emmy now. Um, we had a baby, about an hour with Emmy on me, skin to skin and... I didn't want to have the injection for the placenta on it to come naturally, so she was attached to that for the whole time. And then Daddy did cut the cord, which was really nice, and they took pictures of my placenta for me because I really wanted to see what it looked like. 
Um, I won't put a picture in because it's probably a bit gross for people, but it is amazing. And if you haven't had your baby yet, I highly recommend having a look at it. It's so amazing and fascinating. And yeah, so we did skin skin. I fed her a little bit. She didn't latch onto my boob at all, but we could express and give her a little bit. And then Lou took her and he did skin to skin as well, which I was really happy about. And then they said, right, do you need a wee before you go to surgery? And I was like, no, don't need a wee. So Lou was like, am I just gonna be left with this baby now? Cause I don't know what I'm doing. And luckily our midwife, and we had a midwife support nurse who stayed with him the whole time and like helped him dress her and things whilst I was gone. And they said, oh, she'll only be gone half an hour or so. So they took me in and um, numbed me up. And there was literally about eight people in this room, which is, again, you're not bothered. I literally had like my legs apart, totally naked from the waist down. There was like eight people in the room, didn't care. At this point, I thought, wonder what they think to my shaving job because I didn't do a great job but again wasn't bothered I was in the nicest place I, th I think I must have thanked everybody about 80 times whilst I was in that room they must have thought I was on crack so I was literally like oh thank you so much oh you're all so nice oh you all do such a good job blah 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 and then yeah the surgeon cracked on and she was like we're just going to put a cannula in to, uh, catheter in to drain you because you definitely did need a wee my bladder was absolutely bursting apparently um, so she did that and then I thought oh, I'm going to have to stay in because I've had tears and she said oh, I was going to put leave the catheter in but I don't think I will and I was in the room for about an hour in the end having all, my, all it stitched up obviously I couldn't feel anything and Lou, came to, Lou got the midwife to come and check on me because he was worried that I'd died because he said it, they said it would only be half an hour and I was about an hour and at this point we were on about, I think it was about half 11 at night and they'd moved Lou and Emmy down to the recovery room and then they took me in there and obviously I couldn't stand up for ages because I couldn't feel anything. I'd just about started to get the feeling back in my toes before I was moved back and then yeah we were in the room then it was about 12, half 11, 12 by the time I got back in there. The midwife support nurse or gave me my toast and my tea and I can thankfully say it was totally different to the original tea and toast and it was very nice and amazing and I definitely needed it. Um, and then she ordered us some other food. She's just started to wake up, you might be out here or crying in the background. Um, yeah, she ordered us some other food, so we had some, I think we had lasagna. I was starving, absolutely starving. It's mad how you just get this appetite back. And she did her first poo, her little black poo, which I couldn't change because I couldn't stand up, which I'm slightly happy about, but also not. So Lou did it with, oh God, it's a right pain to do the cotton balls. It took ages, because it's so thick. But he changed her. Oh, and also, I don't know if anyone's watched any of other videos, but I was told throughout my whole pregnancy that we were having a big baby because my, well, not having a big baby, but my bump always measured quite big. And I went for a scan when I was about, I think it was 32 weeks, and they said she was five pound. And they're obviously meant to gain like half a pound a week from 36 weeks. So I already took her to seven plus whatever she'd gained in the other weeks leading up to that. So I was like, oh God. And both my sisters had nine pound something babies for their thirsts. So I was dreading it. She was only six pound 12. So I took all these like naught to one clothes with me to the hospital, I didn't take anything newborn. And they would, they absolutely drowned her. So none of her clothes fit. I had hardly any newborn clothes at home because I didn't see the point. So my sister had to have a mad dash to get us loads of newborn stuff for when we got back. Yeah, so she was absolutely drowning in all her clothes, but she was so good. And the midwife support nurse really helped me with like hand expressing um, to feed her with. And then we took some of the like formula pre-made bottles with us to give her as well. And yeah, so it got to like, I could start, I got my, they came in I think about two, three o'clock in the morning and asked me if I wanted to, get up and have a shower because I could feel myself then and I'd been sat on a pad and I'd bled again so they took me down for a shower and that was nice and they were like the midwife came in and she was like do you want to go home and I was like yes please please let us go home I felt great I felt a bit dizzy a bit weird but I don't know if it's a mix of like the anaesthetic sort of wearing off I hadn't slept for over two days here and I'd had a baby, so all the adrenaline, it just was weird. I was in a weird place. Lou was knackered, because he'd obviously been awake for over a day as well. He'd been awake for nearly two days too at this point. I'd been awake for over two days. Yeah, so they started to sort of get the ball rolling. Our midwife was like, sorry, I'm going to have to go because we've got an emergency case that's come in. So we were waiting for quite a while after they said this. And it was getting a bit annoying because we were tired and 
all this and we finally like got discharged this was about 5 a.m i want to say both of us absolutely knackered we got outside to the car and i said to lou i think i'm meant to have some like medication for my tears because they'd said about giving me laxatives and painkillers and stool softeners as well because obviously i'd torn didn't have any of that and he was like oh for god's sake i was like we're not going back in now we'll just sort it tomorrow because i'm too we're too tired we, and we came home and i'm so grateful that we were both in the car because lou was so exhausted driving home and we had to keep talking to keep each other awake i was really concerned that he would have fell asleep if i hadn't have been there so i sat in the back with emmy but we were talking the whole time and we got back and i said let's just go straight to sleep so we came upstairs put her in her next to me crib got into bed and it was like six and i was on so much of a high still i wouldn't have been able to sleep i couldn't so he slept i came downstairs with emmy and i had because i've not been on my phone either for like two days and so many messages from like my family because lou had been updating both sides like our fam my family and his family i had so many messages and all this so i was just like speaking to people and then lou came down i don't know what time lou came down but yeah and then i went to bed when he came down and we swapped so i did manage to get sleep i think i had about four or five hours and i didn't even, i didn't feel tired you just don't feel tired because you've got so much adrenaline in your body but yeah it was so weird like it's so weird just coming home and you've just got your baby because i don't know anyone else but when i was pregnant i knew i was having a baby but it never really felt like it was going to happen and then there was our baby and she was perfect and oh we were just so in love and we still so are in love and every day we look at her and we just think oh we just say isn't she perfect and the amount of times we just both stand next to her in a car and just look at her while she's asleep it's such a weird thing like you spend some days are just hard and you do have hard days and you think oh god might be nice when she's in bed so so you get a bit of me time but then as soon as she's in bed i don't want her to be in bed and I just come up and stare at her because she's just beautiful and I love her. It's mental, but yeah, that's my story anyway. Like I say, it wasn't the most positive because I did tear and it was a long one, but it could have been worse. She was amazing the whole way through. Honestly, her heart rate stayed strong the whole way. So that's all, I, that's all you can ask for, isn't it? That she's happy and healthy and she was. She was absolutely perfect from start to finish and now she's here and she's also amazing. Um... I will try and do more videos now. I do She does go to bed at like 7 o'clock, so we get a few hours in the evening, so it might be that I do a few more evening ones. might do a few, like, videos throughout our days. But, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching that, and, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.